Okay, we're here with uh, Tim Williams, the head coach of Papillion La Vista, going into now your, your third season at Papillion. Coach, um, talk about the year you guys had, first of all, and, and what really stood out and uh, what you like about your team going forward now into 2021. You know, last year was a, a difficult year for everybody for, for multiple reasons, obviously COVID being one of them. Uh, one of the things that I was worried about last year was not having a season due to COVID was I had so many kids that didn't play varsity minutes uh, the year prior that I needed them to have varsity minutes going into this last year or going into this next year, excuse me. And, and, and so having that season, uh, albeit was a little disappointing, uh, it was really beneficial because we have so many kids that got playing time at the varsity level and the, the experience that comes with it. So I was really, uh, really ex excited about the opportunity for those kids. Um, and you look at what you guys have right, right now on paper, I mean, you've got some really impressive guys, but you got to start with Will Hubert. I asked him this. He had 42 tackles for loss, hmm. 20 sacks. I mean, those are video game type numbers. Right. I mean, what, what kind of year did Will Hubert have for you? It was incredible. I mean, you, you, you watch the kid work, and, and when, you, when you watch him work, I and mean, he was putting in time during the COVID, uh, going out to his D, I mean, he was going to his D line coach's house and putting in work at, in his, in, in his uh, side yard. He lives out in, you know, uh, Plattsmouth. And it was just, just getting extra work in doing that stuff because he wanted to be the best that he possibly could be. So watching him do those things uh, was just fun to watch for me as a coach. And, and obviously all the work that he put in, it, it showed on the field. I mean, 20 sacks is, is absolutely ridiculous. You know, I don't, I don't spend too much time looking at like, uh, you know, max preps and all that stuff too much about seeing where he is. But, you know, most of the year he's, he's leading the, the nation in, in sacks. And sure. you sit there and go, okay, well, that's kind of fun to have that guy. I don't know if you could even <clears> – <throat> find this out from like a Stu Pops soul from the World Herald, but was that maybe a Class A record, do you know? Or? That I don't know. I'd, that's something I'd probably have to ask him. But it, I, I would put money on it. I would put money that, uh, that, that he set a record. Because you think back in the day, people didn't pass as much back then, so you weren't going to get 20 sacks Correct. in the 90s or whatnot. So Not here. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, recruiting-wise with Will, I mean, with those types of numbers, who have you heard from? Uh, you know, this, the the – Teams that he's getting calls from, you know, like he got offered from Columbia and University of Penn, and uh, I've heard from North Dakota State and, and uh, Nebraska. I know has talked to him, and there's been some other schools that smaller schools that have called to um, South Dakota State is a, is another one that that's got that's gotten a hold of him. Um, I'm I'm hoping that that more more schools are going to start taking note and start calling, but those are the ones that I know of it right now. And then another big body you have uh, Luke Lindemeyer um, just under 6'4 235 tight end DN outside linebacker and a 3-4 I mean describe Luke Lindemeyer in, in kind of the type of player he is uh I I I called him at the beginning of the year the silent assassin because he just kind of he doesn't really talk much you know so he just goes out and does his thing uh I still think he's probably the you know arguably one of the best tight ends in the state and and I and I would put him up against anybody. I would want him on my team all the time. And and uh, I think he needs to he needs to have, he's going to have a big year in my personal opinion. And I think he had a great year last year. And I think I think he needs to start getting recognized a little bit more too. But I still think he's one of the best. It's up, it's interesting with the tight ends in this state. How many have come out mm -hmm. recently? I mean, do you ever have coaches talk to you about that? Like, man, Nebraska puts out a lot of good tight ends. Uh, you know what? Somebody actually was. I was just talking to somebody the other day, talking about how uh, we we have all these tight ends that are leaving and they're going over. You know, Iowa's taking a lot of our guys and so on. And so and and I and I sit there and I think, yeah, we do have some really good ones. You know, because I cause, I mean I go back to my days when I first started when I was at Omaha Bryan and we always ended up having two to three good tight ends every year that would go on and play D two and it would go on to play uh, you know at that time what was it uh, Division one double A I think mm -hmm. they called it then and uh, it was just something that was kind of cool to to see so yeah there are a lot of tight ends coming out and then um, you know Tyson we had a chance to watch you guys play this year and 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 he was an explosive playmaker um, with everything he did thirty seven inch vertical four five speed. Um, what type of year did he have and kind of what's his overall upside? Tyson, Tyson's great because of the fact of how fast he, he really is. And they always have to put two or three guys or at least around him. They got to have at least two guys knowing where he is and then another guy kind of spying him. And it really opens up some things for us. Um, 
we're really excited about him going into his senior year because of the fact that he has that up, you know, that speed. Uh, we really do think that teams are going to have to really pay attention to where he is, which is going to open up some other things for people like Luke, uh, for people like some of our wide receivers. And then our run game, I think, is going to really improve because of the fact that uh, Tyson is, is as fast as he is, and, and they got to know where he is. And then you've got another really impressive middle linebacker mm -hmm. in Caden Johnson, 6'1", 6'1 205, 210. What will he mean to your team on defense? Uh, we moved him to linebacker last year because we, we, needed a, we needed inside linebacker. He was actually, at the start of the year, he was our starting safety. Uh, he covers a lot of ground, and he, and, and he runs the alley probably better than anybody I've ever seen. Um, but we needed him at, at outside line, or inside linebacker, and so he came in and, and, and put up some really big numbers for us. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do. And, and again, they're going to need to know where he is, which we have another couple good inside linebackers, we think, this year that will really have some big games because they're going to have to worry about blocking him. Well, Coach, thank you for joining us. You did a lot over the years at Waverly. It looks like you're kind of building the same thing here in Papillion as well. We're trying our best. It starts in the weight room, and that's where the guys are starting to get uh, their success from. So. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.